Welcome to video 8 in our Robot CN VEX series. In this video, we'd like to cover IF structures. Let's go ahead and take a look at the description. The left motor will run at full power only if switch A is held. The right motor will run at full power only if switch B is held. Both motors can run at the same time. Okay, so we've already done this just a little bit. We know how to get the motors to run if we're holding the switches. So this time we have two separate motors. So the first thing I need to do is go into my motors and sensor setup and put on another motor. Okay, so we now have two switches. We still have the LED, which we're not going to use right now, and we have the two motors. Okay, so we need to first put it in a forever loop so that we've got the ability to control this forever. So in our control structures, I'll bring over our while. This was our forever, one equal equal one. I'll also let you know that you can replace that with just the word true. So that is a forever loop. Okay, so inside the body, we want to do something about while somebody's holding the switch, then the motor can run. All right, so I need another while statement that's going to come in. And this is going to be starting my motor. So natural language and start motor. So while, just like we did before, sensor value, square brackets, and this was switch A, square bracket, while switch A is a 1. So while somebody is holding it, then start the motor. So switch A is tied to my left motor at full power. So while sensor value switch A is a 1, then start this motor. And then we're going to copy this, and we're going to paste it. Do some fixed formatting. Let's go ahead and scroll a little bit. Right motor. And that's also 127, so that's switch B. Okay, so the only thing we need to do is be able to stop the motor. And um, because these while statements really are banked together, um, I only really need one stop motor. I could put two in there, but it's not necessary. Because if this one's not true, then it will check this one. If this one's not true, then it will go ahead and stop my motor. Right motor, and we need to stop the other one. Because we don't know which one could have been running. If it makes you feel better and you want to go ahead and put them together, um, then we can go ahead and put this one up with here, and I could leave that one there. And either way, they're, they're going to get stopped um, as long as that while is not running. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile it, and we're going to test it. Okay, so it's blinking around. That's fine. So it must be stopping motors, stopping motors. It's stopping both the left and the right. And right now we're going to try to switch A. Awesome. I can control that motor. And how about switch B? Um, let's check something. So I'm going to go to my sensors tab, and I want to make sure that my switch B is working. Switch B is working, and then I want to go to the motors with PID. So nothing's coming on for the left. Um, the other motor's not there, so that should be important one. Let's go ahead and check our motors and sensor setup again. Right motor, VEX 393. Get that plugged in. Let's try that again. So download to the robot. And it's start. I don't see both motors here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go up to Robot, download firmware, manually update firmware, Robot C, and I'm going to wipe the Cortex clean. We'll see if this fixes our problem.
Okay, let's try it again. Compile, download a robot. Okay, so now I have both motors. I don't know why, um, actually says it's a 269. I must have made a mistake. So my motors and sensor set up. Oh, I do. I have that as a 269. Should have been a 393. It really doesn't matter. It's not going to hurt anything either way. I don't know why that happens, but every once in a while it does. And that um, downloading the firmware to it wipes it off clean and sets it all back to factory. And we're good to go from there. So now let's try it. So start. So we can still run that one. So the bad part is I could actually have a bad motor, um, or it could be a bad port, either one. So first thing I'm going to do is try the motor. All I'm going to do is swap the two motors. So I know this one worked. So the motor is not the problem. It could be the port itself. So for some reason, that port seems to be bad. So I'm going to have to go ahead and add a motor controller onto it so that I can plug it into a different port. Okay, so now we're in port 2, so I'll go ahead and stop it. Go ahead and go up to my motors and sensor setup, and because we gave them names, all I have to do is actually move this. Um, so I want to move it off of port 1 and move it into port 2. That's now a 393 motor, that's a no motor. Okay, and I don't have to do anything into the code of the program at all because I used variable names. So download the robot. Start, and now on port 2 is the right motor. So A still works, and now B works. So I don't know one way or another there's something wrong with that specific port, um, but you're going to have to troubleshoot that if that kind of stuff happens. All right, so I can run both of the motors, but the last thing said both motors can run at the same time. So if A is running, B cannot be. If B is running, a cannot be. Hmm. That's because of the way wiles work. Only one wile structure can be true at a time, so that's a problem. It says both motors can run at the same time, and right now I can't make that happen. Um, not with the two different switches. I could put both motors inside the same while, but I couldn't make them controllable by the switch, and that's not what the other engineers need. They need to be able to control them differently with two different switches, but at the same time. So. Unfortunately, wiles will only get me so far. I now need two things to be able to be true at the same time. I need the software to be able to make a decision. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the program, and it's no longer going to be a while. They're going to be ifs. If sensor value switch B is a 1, then start the motor. If, switches, if sw sensor value switch A is a 1, then start the other motor. So two ifs can run at the same time. The only time you need ifs is when some type of decision needs to be made or two things should be running at the same time. But there's still a problem. I'm going to go ahead and download the robot. And hit start. I can hear the motor humming. Click this one. I, the motor's trying, but it's not doing it right. It's turning on and off. Look down in the debugger window. It's 127, 0, 127, 0. The other one's the same thing. 127, 0. It's those stop motors. Because two if statements can run at the same time, those stops are actually running at the same time as well, and they're all conflicting with each other. So what can I do? I guess I could create two more ifs. Um, I could go ahead and say copy this. If switch A is a zero, then go ahead and stop the motor. 
and then I'll have to do it again. You've got to get rid of this one. Um, it can't just float in there kind of like it could for the wilds. And then I'm going to have to do it again. Copy, paste. If that one's a zero, then, oops, then we'll go ahead and stop it. Get rid of our extra space here, fix formatting. Okay, so if it's a one, turn it on. If it's a zero, turn it off. If it's a one, turn this one on. If it's a zero, turn it off. So we'll go ahead and download the robot. Start it up. So right now nothing is running just like we want. A runs. So when it's a 1, it's running. When it's a 0, it's off. On with a 1. Off with a 0. And then both of them on. So that's awesome. So that all works. But I can simplify it just a little bit more. They get banked together with what are called if-else statements. So this is an if, and this one is going to be an else. Because there's only two things that could ever happen, I can erase this completely. It doesn't need anything. So if it's a, if it's a one or somebody's pushing it, then turn it on. If it's not, then go ahead and stop it. And I can do the exact same thing here, else. So it's an if and an else. So we can group them together. You can't just have a whole bunch of ifs and one else. They, they have to be in pairs or in partners together. So it's an if with an else and an if with an else. So it's really nice that I don't have to put anything else with it. So if this condition's true, do it. If it's anything other than that condition, then stop doing it. So we'll download the robot. We'll hit start. Awesome, that's what we want. So we can have multiple ifs. We have to be careful about having things outside of the if statements that are inside the loop. We can have an if with an else, so we can have them in pairs or banked together. And then we have one more situation. So we're gonna create one more scenario. Okay, so in this scenario, I have two switches, switch A and switch B, and just one motor. If switch A is pressed, the left motor will run full power forward. If switch B is pressed, the same left motor will run half power backwards. And if no switch is pressed, then the motor will stop. So, okay, let's go ahead and build this just like we did. And again, you can't just have a whole bunch of ifs. Um, you have the tendency to want to do something like this. If sensor value switch A is true I'll go ahead and grab my start motor full speed 127 And then we'll do another if, if center value B, then the left motor is going to go half power backwards, and then just an else. Stop motor, left motor. So we'll go ahead and hit fix formatting so we make sure we have enough curly brackets. And same thing with these ifs. If I come up to the control structures, if I go to if statements, I have them in here too. I have just if statements by themselves. I have if statements with else's. And I have this one here. This is the one that I really like. Um, so if I drag this over, I want to show you what it looks like. So if I drag this over, it automatically gives me an if and an else together. Okay. All right, so I said a minute ago that you can't have a whole bunch of ifs and just one else. This else is only tied to this if, and I'll prove it, but there's going to be another problem as well. So when I go ahead and download to the robot, I'm going to start off with the switch B. So I hit start, and I'm going to start with switch B. 
So negative 63, it stops just like it's supposed to. Now we go over to switch A. It's not working um, because that other else is stopping it all the time. What about both of them at the same time? They're, they're conflicting because so I have two switches being able to control the same thing all at the same time. So it doesn't work this way. You can't just have a whole bunch of if statements and then one else that kills it. Um, I could go ahead and copy this and paste it. And this would be the left motor. So if sensor value switch A is on, start the motor, else stop it. This one would start the motor, else stop it. So I have ifs banked together with those else's. So this looks like it kind of fixes some of the problem. So if this one is on, then start it. If not, stop it. If this one is on, then start it. If not, then stop it. But when I go ahead and download it, I'm going to get the same type of thing. When I hit start, because two things can be true at the same time, this one is trying to start it, but this one is trying to stop it. And this one is trying to start it, and this one's trying to stop it. But if I held them both, they're both trying to stop it. And this, this whole thing isn't going to work. I need a whole other set of structures because I'm trying to use two things to control the same object, and they're all conflicting with each other. I have one more step that I can put in. I'm going to delete this else, and I'm going to make this an if else. So I have an if, oops, not if else, else if. So if I have an if, an else if, and an else, these three are now in a hierarchy together. This one is the most important. This one will overwrite anything. This one is the second most important, and this one is the least important. So let me show you what that means. So I can go ahead and download the robot. Go ahead and hit start, and switch A is the one that's most important. So switch A will run my motor. Switch B will run my motor. But if I'm holding switch A and then push B, nothing will happen because A is the most important. A is the if. Well, what if it was the other way around? What if I was holding B and then I pushed A? A will overwrite B because A again is the most important. Whatever's in the if has the highest um, level of importance. The else if is the second and then the else is the one that gets to take over when nobody else is telling you what to do. When none of the defined conditions are met, then it falls into the else. So if nobody's pushing one of the switches, then the else takes over. So while structures are going to get used the majority of the time, but you can use if structures if you need more than one thing to be true at the same time. Anytime you need to make a decision between multiple things at the same time, then we can use ifs. You can use all ifs, you can use ifs with elses, or you can use if, else if, and elses.